Can I register a copyright at the United States Copyright Office in a creative work that was made from generative AI? Hello and welcome. This is private US copyright attorney, Eric Kelly. In this video, I'll go over the current policy of the United States Copyright Office as of March 16th, 2023, with respect to whether or not creative works made from generative AI may have copyrights that can be registered. Note this is an area of actively evolving law, so the points of current policy of the United States Copyright Office noted in this video could be different in the future. Okay, let's get into this one. First, what is generative AI? Well, the AI portion refers to artificial intelligence, and basically generative AI is AI that outputs or generates various types of works, including creative works, typically based off some type of input, um, often what we would call a prompt. And the prompt is often generated by a human. So the human would enter some type of prompt and then the generative AI will output some type of work. And with respect to copyrights, we're talking about creative works. So for example, generative AI may generate music, sounds, artwork, graphics, animations, videos, literary works, and basically any type of combination of those different types of creative works. As some examples of generative AI tools in the art field or art space, some examples are, so Playground AI is one example. Another example would be Lexica. Another example would be dreamlike.art. Another example would be Blue Willow. And then of course, the probably the most famous is the one that gets at least gotten the most press recently is mid journey. And then in the, the sound or the music space of generative AI, some examples include Mubert or Mubert, Soundful, and Sound Raw. And then of course there's Chat GPT, which can be used for a variety of things, including generating creative literary works. So those are just some examples of some generative AI tools, at least that we were currently seeing as of this time frame of let's say May 2023, I would expect there'll be different ones and more diverse ones in, in the near future. Okay, so let's now talk about US copyright law. So with respect to US copyright, the general rule is that the copyright automatically comes into its existence the moment a creative work is what we say in copyright law, fixed and tangible medium of expression. So what does fixed and a tangible medium of expression mean? Basically, this just means as soon as a given creative work exists in some form of tangible medium, its copyright comes into existence. I'll provide some examples to help this make better sense for you. So for handcrafted creative works, things like a hand painted painting, a hand drawn drawing, a handwritten literary work, or even a typed literary work like using an old fashioned typewriter these days, anything of that nature that was basically done by hand, as soon as that given creative work appears on paper, or if you're using some other type of physical substrate as the medium, as soon as that creative work appears on that physical substrate medium, which is generally paper or canvas, it could be other things, could be a wall, that copyright comes into existence because the given creative work has been fixed into a tangible medium, medium of expression. So in those particular examples, the actual substrate, whatever, the creative work is appearing on, that's the tangible medium of expression. But that's kind of like the more historic or traditional way of looking at it. So similarly, for creative works that were created and saved to file with the aid of some kind of like computing hardware, like any type of computer and software, such as, but not limited to like word processing software, art software, music software, et cetera, as soon as a given creative work has been saved to file, its copyright comes into existence because essentially the law has treated that, that saved digital file as a tangible medium of expression. So again, to summarize, with respect to US copyright law, the general rule is that the copyright automatically comes into its existence the moment the given creative work is fixed in a tangible medium of expression. And that can be as simple as saving to file whatever the given work might have been. However, there is an important caveat to that general rule that the copyright automatically comes into its existence the moment the creative work was fixed in a tangible medium 
of expression. And that caveat is U.S. copyright law includes a requirement for human authorship. That is, U.S. copyrights only exist in creative works that have been authored, basically made or created by a human. So for example, in a 2018 a Ninth Circuit case called Nerado versus Slater, the Ninth Circuit held that a monkey cannot register a copyright in photos taken by the monkey because of this human authorship requirement. The monkey obviously was not a human and therefore the monkey could not register copyrights in those photo photographs taken by the monkey. That case basically referred to how in the language of that Copyright Act itself, the language often would refer to children and grandchildren, to the widow or widower of the author. And the widower and widow of an author necessarily implies that the author must be human. And thus, basically, you get the rule of law that excludes non-human animals. Basically, non-human animals cannot register copyrights. There's additionally other cases from the Supreme Court as well. There's other federal circuit court, circuit court cases, and they basically all fall back on the position that there needs to be human authorship for any given creative work to be registered, to have its, create, to have its copyright registered at the U.S. Copyright Office. So there's pretty much a, a long tradition that U.S. copyright law includes a requirement for human authorship. U.S. copyrights only exist in creative works that have been authored, made, and are created by a human. So based on that caveat, you likely can see where the U.S. Copyright Office current policy is heading with respect to AI-generated creative works. However, in February 2023, so relatively recently, at least from the time I'm making this video, the U.S. Copyright Office concluded that a copyright in a graphic novel whose images were generated by generative AI was Mid Journey was the generative AI that was used to make the images for that graphic novel. The copyright, the overall copyright in that graphic novel was registerable because the written portions of that graphic novel were created by a human. But that the generative AI images of that graphic novel were not protected by copyright. So essentially you have a creative work, in this case a, a graphic novel, which includes some creative aspects in particular the written portions which were made by a human and those portions the copyright can be registered but this book also included aspects that were made from generative generative ai and those aspects are not going to be protected by it copyright so you can have a creative work with some elements from a human and some elements from from an ai but only the human creative elements are going to be eligible for us copyright protection or, or in other words the AI contributions to that overall creative work are not going to be protected by, by copyright, by US copyright. So here's the current policy from the United States Copyright Office with, with respect to whether or not creative works from generative AI, or that include um, a creative aspect from generative AI, can be registered, can have their copyrights registered. So number one, each creative work is examined on a case-by-case -case basis. So there's not necessarily a bright, a bright line rule here that covers everything. Each individual creative work that gets submitted for registration needs to be examined on a case-by-case -case basis. Number two, only the human authored creative aspects can be registered. Number three, any AI generated creative aspects need to be identified and basically disclaimed or, or included in the limited portion of the application. So they're going to be limited from receiving copyright protection. Number four, the applicant, the applicant who is preparing and filing a U.S. copyright registration application has a duty, an affirmative duty, to disclose what aspects of the creative work that they're submitting were human authored and what aspects were AI generated. If you fail to adhere to that duty, you could have a copyright registration canceled by the U.S. Copyright Office, or in litigation, you can all have an adverse finding directed against you. Number five, Currently, only the standard application may be used to, to file a creative work that has some generative AI contribution. And then lastly, number six is when you're preparing in your you're preparing your standard application at the US Copyright Office, you do not want to list the generative AI as an author or co-author. However, you you are going to want to include information about the use of generative AI. And I'll go over that a little bit 
in more detail further down when I talk about some of the more specifics about using the standard application in this manner. Okay, so let's apply the current US Copyright Office policy with respect to generative AI to a couple of, ex of examples here. So if the only human involvement in a given creative work was drafting or crafting the prompt that was used by the generative AI or the generative AI to output that given creative work, then the resulting creative work would not have a copyright that's registrable because basically all the creative content would have come just from the generative AI, not from the human. So that is the human's contributions to the prompt are not deemed sufficient to qualify for a copyright registration. However, if a human sufficiently edited or amended a given creative work, wherein that given creative work was originally made from a generative AI, then the human edited version of that creative work might support a copyright that can be registered at the copyright office. It really would come down to how much was how much editing did the human basically add to that work of authorship. And or if a human's involvement in a project was pertaining to the selection, coordination, and or arrangement of separate or various different AI-generated works, then that human-made selection, coordination, and or arrangement aspects might be sufficient to support registration of a copyright in those human-authored creative aspects at the U.S. Copyright Office. Okay, because as the current policy as of March 2023 from the U.S. Copyright Office is that any creative works that include some generative AI elements, those have to be prepared and submitted through the standard application. Let's go through that standard application to see what, what that really means. So to find the standard application, you first have to go to the U.S. Copyright Office's homepage, their webpage, which is basically which is, which is what, you're, what you're seeing right here, which is so you want to navigate to copyright.gov. And then from there, you're gonna come over to the registration area. So you go into the registration area. And then here, you're gonna to wanna to click on basically the portal because you need to log into to your account at the copyrightoffice.gov and you need to do that through the portal. So I'll be clicking on the portal. Okay, then once you get into the portal area, you'll be clicking on this button here so you can log into your account. So here's the current login screen. So you'll basically enter your, your user ID and your password and click login, basically pretty standard stuff. Okay, then once you've logged in, you should see a screen that looks somewhat like this. This is the typical user interface once you've logged in. And over here, these are all the different types of applications essentially that you can prepare. And again, we're concerned with the standard applications. You can see right here a standard application. So we're gonna go into the standard application, and talk about some particular points that are important to consider if, you're, if you want to seek US copyright registration of a creative work that includes some generative AI elements. So once you click on the standard application, you're brought to this kind of start area, which gives you some, some information about the standard application. And then to actually get into the standard application, you have to hit, hit the start registration button. So we'll go ahead and do that. And once you've hit the start registration button, this is, you'll, should, you should see a screen that looks somewhat like this. And you can see here, these are all the different elements that we're gonna go through as we go through the standard application. And the ones that are important for with respect to if you're including generative AI are gonna be the authors section, the limitation of claims section, and then the certification section. Those all have some areas where you can enter some information that, that could pertain to using some generative AI. So we'll go ahead and look at those different, different sections. So when you first make it to the authors section, I note I've already completed the type of work, titles, and publication areas, which aren't, they don't really pertain to this particular video. And I just entered basically dummy information anyway, just to get to this author section. So this is the very start of the author of the author's section. So you're going to click new to add basically the author here, or if you're just adding yourself, you could add me, click add me. And at some point in the author's area, you'll get to this field. And these little buttons here, these are just so you can select the type of, in this particular example, I selected a visual art. So you would select the type of visual art that's here. But here in the other, the other field, this is where you want to delineate which portions of this overall creative work that you're fighting, and which portions were done by a human and which portions were done by generative AI. So you could use this other field for that, for that purpose here. So that's why we're talking about this author section. Okay, so now we've made it down to the limitation of claim area. And this is another area where you're gonna basically call out which portions of the work that you're filing were made by a human and which portions were made by the generative AI. So on the material excluded, you're gonna click whichever one of these is applicable. 
And in the other field, you're going to explain which portions were made by the generative AI. Okay, and that material is going to be excluded. But at the same time, you also have to note which of the material was made by the human that's going to be included. Okay, so that's how you use this limitation of claim area with respect to a creative work that includes some generative AI contribution. But the, but the overall creative work has to have some human authorship or else it won't be, or else the copyright cannot be registered. Okay, now we're in the, the certification area. So we, you can see we've gone through all the other different sections of the standard application. And then this little field here, which is note to the Copyright Office, this is also another good location where you can specifically describe which elements of this overall creative work were authored by the human and which elements or aspects of this overall creative work had AI generative contributions. So this is another important field to use for that purpose. So that's how you're gonna to wanna to use the standard application when you're filing a creative work that has both human authorship elements and that has generative AI contribution elements. So again, important areas were the authors area. There was a field where you get to the other uh, field in the author section where you can describe what we just talked about. Same thing in the limitation of claim area. You wanna exclude the contributions made by the generative AI, but you also have to note which portions that you're including by the human. And similarly, you can, in the certification area, in this note to copyright office field, again, you can spell out those differences and describe which portions were made by the human and which portions were made by the generative AI. And then lastly, I'll just show you how you can actually find for yourself the current policy from the United States Copyright Office with respect to generative AI. So you can kind of go through and verify the information that I've talked about, or at least read it for yourself if you're curious, or look for future updates. So basically, you just go to, to a Google search, and this is I, I, the basic search string I entered was US Copyright Office Policy AI. And then I'm basically going to click on this first link, Copyright and Artificial Intelligence. And this is at the United States Copyright Office, copyright.gov. So here, here's the landing page from that search result link. And then if you were to click on this area right here, copyright registration guidance for works containing AI generated material, this, this link will take you to the actual policy, the current policy. Or if you went down over here to the announcement area, March 16th, 2020, you could click on this link as well, but this would actually take you one additional step to get where you wanna go, which is the current policy. And you can also see some upcoming events where they're gonna be discussing certain areas, things that may be relevant. All right, so if you had clicked that upper right link that we just talked about, you would be taken directly to the current policy. And that's what you're seeing right here. This is the actual current policy. And you can go ahead and download, this is a PDF file, you can download it and read it. And basically the, this whole video is basically summarized some of the main points of this particular policy statement in, in this PDF file. And then this screen is if you had clicked on that announcement link instead, you'd be taken to this announcement from March 16, 2023. But if you click over here where it says registration guidance, this particular link, this will also take you to the policy statement in a PDF file version. However, it's gonna be a slightly different format than the one we just saw, but it's still this exact same policy information. And I'll show you what that looks like next. So here's that link. If you were to click on that registration guidance link from the last slide we just looked at. And basically here's the policy portion starts right here. This other part you can ignore. It's not, it has nothing to do with copyright. But again, it's the same policy that we just saw from a few uh, slides back. In any event, this is how you can pull up the policy yourself if you're interested in reading it yourself. Okay, let's wrap up this video. So this has been private U.S. copyright attorney Eric Kelly. And I do work with clients from all over the world and all over the United States. And as noted here, I am a copyright, trademark, and patent attorney. So I do handle copyright, trademark, and patent matters. Copyrights, which, is, which has been the subject matter of this particular video, basically deals with protecting creative, work, creative works, things like music, songs, videos, photos, literary works, things of that nature. Whereas trademarks is another intellectual property tool that deals with protecting the brands and branding, logos, things of that nature. Although copyrights can also be used to protect a logo because a logo is a form of visual art. And then lastly, you have patents and patents are yet another intellectual property tool which are used to protect essentially new, basically novel and non-obvious inventions. So essentially new products. And then lastly, you can see here some contact information if you want to reach out to me regarding an intellectual property matter. Thank you. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel to help me reach others about intellectual property legal matters. And here's some of my suggested videos on U.S. copyright issues. Thank you.